Peace everyone, Unmaskart here. Welcome back to another oil painting live stream. As you can see, my setup has changed a little bit from the previous uh, live stream. Uh, I spent the last couple days uh, completely tearing down my studio space and rebuilding it. I repainted like my stand and everything. Uh, I resurfaced my table. As you can see, it is white now and it's really nice. Uh, don't know exactly what this material is, but it's sort of a plasticky, hard plastic material that's going to be a lot easier for me to keep clean, um, which is nice. So anyways, I'm going to be working on this uh, this painting here. I'm just going to jump right into it and uh, feel free to ask me any and all questions that you have. And I hope you're having a lovely day. I am just checking something really quick. Okie dokie, looks good. Hey there, Kizzy, good to see you. All right, now I need to bring up my reference photo. Okie dokie. Yeah. How's your week going, Kizzy? Hope it's going well. Our last couple days have been super, super, super busy for me. Oh, I'm so exhausted. Uh, I spent all day Wednesday and all day Thursday and all morning today uh, getting all of this set up, prepared for the live stream today. Uh, I will admit that I almost didn't paint today. It was such a pain to get all of this set up and I'm I'm still not 100% on my lighting, so I changed my lighting setup as well. Um, I built, using some PVC, PVC fixtures, I, I built a, a modified mount for my lights, but um, I think I perhaps overestimated the strength of the PVC. Uh, my lights are a bit heavier than I realized and the PVC is flexing quite a bit so I'm gonna need to figure a different mount for my lights but for now it's working but it's working and it's making me nervous it's it's it just makes me a little bit nervous because the PVC is flexing so much and it's been like a day and a half or so at this point that my lights have been hanging and they're starting to sag a bit more and I don't like it. So yeah, I, I may need to find another solution to the lights, but uh, so far everything is working quite nicely. Hey there, Victor. Happy Friday to you as well. What do you guys think? You guys like the uh, the background cutout? Uh, this I'm using my new camera now, so we shouldn't have any weird resetting issues with the camera. Um, so the the face cam should be perfectly good. Everything should be in proper working order. And I so I I decided I decided to set up my. My green screen again. I used to do this in the past, but my lighting was so so poor that it it caused a lot of artifacts and it really drove me nuts. Uh, this setup here is still not perfect with the green screen because I need another light, but um, I may I may continue to fine tune it. But for now, I think it's for now. I think it looks quite good. Hey there, Chandri. Good to see you. I should probably use a larger brush, but I, I really like this small brush, so maybe I'll just keep doing this. Uh, 
I can't believe that the the month of July is is like over. Um, it's it's wild. Is I can't I can't remember. Is the first on Sunday or is it Monday? You have to remind me. Um, my wife and I, we will be celebrating seven years. That's seven seven years together, not not married but together. August August first. Oh, hey there, Norlene. Oh, you like the new look? Thanks, Victor. Appreciate that. I uh, appreciate you popping in to say hello, Norlene. Oh, is it Monday? Oh, thank you. Hello, uh, Sujanath. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that reasonably. Welcome to the live stream. Happy to have you. Hope you're doing well. Oh, you're in the UAE. That's cool. I've I've been I've been to the UAE a few times. To Dubai. And surrounding areas of Dubai. Forty-two years this October. That is super exciting. Can't wait to get my numbers up like that. Yep, seven seven years ago, we started dating, and it. Even saying it out loud, seven years, it, it doesn't feel like seven years. Oh, so this, this here is not stretched canvas. This is actually just canvas paper. So you can, you can buy, it's, um, it's like pre-gessoed and everything, uh, and it comes in a block like normal paper. It comes in a block that you just, you just pull out pieces when you use them, um, I would I would probably not recommend using this if you're doing like a a large scale project something that you're going to invest a lot of time into. Uh, but you could think of this as being like the sketch paper of oil paint. But I I wouldn't recommend like doing commissions or anything like that on this kind of paper. I would just do it for practice. I'm just, this is just a, a simple little project that will, you know, uh, that I'm doing for the Evolve program. Uh, they they supply all these uh, materials for me, so I'm just using it for that reason. Generally, I don't like to work on canvas. Uh, this here is the Canson, uh, the uh, Canson brand of uh, canvas paper and it's quite nice it's not too textury i mean it's got the canvas texture but it's rather small it's gessoed and so the the it's very even you know it's very very even so it's not too bad to work on for someone that doesn't like to work on textured surfaces this is probably the best canvas paper that I've that I've used. I've tried a, a couple different brands in the past. Uh, 
Oh, I, I forgot to draw the uh, the cast shadow for this other pawn over here. Hello, Glenn. So uh, if you if you stretch your normal canvas, like you can get a roll of canvas, uh, you're going to need stretcher bars, which is the the bars that actually that you staple the canvas to. It's kind of hard to um, it's kind of hard to explain how to do it without physically doing it in front of you, but it's relatively easy. Um, you you put the stretcher bars together you have to buy the stretcher bars depending on the size that you buy de depends on the size of the canvas that you're going to be making um and you so you you put the stretcher bars together uh you don't have to glue them you don't glue them or nail them or anything like that uh and then you put some stretcher bars are different but generally there's a little little piece of wood that you slip in and then you tap in with a hammer to to tighten up the corners but you wrap your canvas around that and you pull it rather snug you don't want to pull it super super tight that's unnecessary um, but you you pull it around and then you do the opposite corners you use a stapler and you staple the opposite corners on the back and then you you know pull it snug to the other corners and do the the other two corners and then you do the middle part on the sides and then you just do one side at a time and then you do it the other side and then so you always do the opposite side and um if your canvas gets a little bit flimsy all you do is spray uh, the back of it with a little bit of water you don't have to soak it or anything just to spray it with a little bit of water and it will tighten up really nicely and then you can gesso it i would not some you know some artist don't have an issue with painting on flat canvas and then stretching it after the fact but i wouldn't recommend doing that i think you risk i think you risk cracking your painting if you do that so i would i would always stretch it before uh before i start painting Yeah, basically like wrapping a gift. Uh, thank you, Victor, for that. Congratulations. As usual, if you guys have any questions or topics that you want to talk about, just feel free to let me know. Uh, so would you attach it to a board to frame if you don't stretch it first? Uh, not usually. No. Um, sometimes you just have it nailed up to... Well, I guess... Yeah, I mean, you probably don't want to nail it to your wall, so having it nailed to a board or stapled to a board um, 
is is probably the most common way. Some people just use like clips, so they're not putting holes in the canvas anywhere. And what they'll do is they'll sort of clip it on a board, like a cork board or um, like a you know some kind of cheap wood, just so that they can move it around relatively easily. And it will have just the cut edges, and they'll just paint sort of whatever size they want. And then when they go to stretch it, uh, sometimes the paint will even wrap around the the edges or the corners where they they stretch it because they they have a general idea of the size that they want to paint, and so they just paint whatever size, and then they st create custom stretcher bars to fit exactly the way that they want. Uh, every every artist is going to do it a little bit different. Everybody has their their own preferences, and realistically if you're buying your own unstretched canvas odds are you're pretty experienced you know you're not going to uh, if you're if you're just getting into oil painting or if you've only been doing it for a couple years odds are you're trying to keep it simple in the beginning you're not trying to overcomplicate things like by adding canvas stretching to your routine to oil paint. Uh, most people buy the pre-stretched canvases and those work really well and there's no reason not uh, there's no reason to avoid them unless you're looking for like a very particular size or shape or something dimension wise. Um, I would say stretching your own canvas is pretty pointless unless you're looking for something super specific. Uh, that you just can't find at the store or whatever. Or you want to have other control aspects as far as the texture of the canvas and the gesso that you put on it or something along those lines. So, it, you know, you can get real, you can get real particular with the uh, canvas uh, that you, that you use and all of that. So, hey there, uh, Kara, good to see you. All right, that I think is enough of that color. So I'll switch to the next shadow color. I actually made the my desktop um, a little bit bigger. I made it wider by five centimeters, and yeah, it feels it feels nice. You know, I didn't think five centimeters was going to make that big of a difference, but truthfully, it actually makes actually actually makes a noticeable difference with just my surface space here. I just feel like there's more room. I mean, it'd be five by sixty, I think. I think it, yeah, I think it's sixty. So that's that's three hundred square centimeters of extra space. That's that's a decent amount of space. All right, time for the next level of shadows. The shadows that are not as dark. Anyone else doing some artwork? Let me know what you're working on. Just dropping by? Well, I appreciate that.
it's quite humid today here in Poland. I think it's, I, I feel like it's going to rain later. I sure hope it does because the humidity is a little sticky. It's probably one of the more humid days that I've felt in uh, a long time. It's not too bad, but it's noticeable. And it's, it's real cloudy, so. Oh, hey, Cece. Are you working on the waterfall project? That's cool. You're doing a gorilla in black and gray pan pastels. Oh, that sounds fun. I should do a gorilla. Gorillas are amazing animals. I think gorillas are probably one of the coolest, probably one of the coolest animals on the planet. And they're the, they, they are the best argument when I, when I tell people that I only eat a plant-based diet and they, they ask me where I get my protein. I can just, I can just say gorilla because <laughs> gorillas are like, They're like 200 to 300 kilos of pure muscle, and all they eat are leaves. <laughs> so you don't, you don't, you don't see gorillas struggling to get their protein. And they're not out there taking down cows and chickens, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, gorillas are really cool. Um, oh, hey there, Linda. Working on a night landscape. Oh, that, that sounds difficult. Nighttime landscapes are tricky. The, the value, the, the value changes in the dark uh are are really subtle and difficult to capture so yeah that sounds like a challenging project right there i we should do another night scene i did a night scene a few years ago of the vavel castle i should do i should do another night scene sometime i should you know what i should do i should take my camera and and take some nighttime photos in the city center and do like a nighttime scene of of the Katowice city center. That'd be that would be kind of cool. I haven't I haven't done any nighttime photography in a long time. I mean, goodness, I haven't really done a lot of photography in a long time. I don't really go out with my camera anymore. Uh, what's my opinion on artists who are into multiple media, like watercolor, pastel oil, gouache? Don't you think it's dilution of your work not to be focused? Oh, no, I wouldn't say that at all. Um, you know, a lot of... So I I do... I, I can pretty much do any medium. I can do oil paint, acrylic, colored pencil pastel. I can even do digital medium. Uh, I, I don't have a lot of experience with watercolor, so I, I wouldn't, I, I would be able to use watercolor and create something probably relatively impressive. Uh, but because of my limited technical understanding of that medium, there are some things that I probably wouldn't be able to perform very well with that medium because of my lack of experience. But overall, I can jump between just about any mediums and because I have a fundamental understanding of how to create art, the medium in which you use is one of the smaller things that you actually have to learn. Like if you if you've used acrylic paints for a long time uh, or gouache, then transitioning to another painting medium like oil paint really wouldn't be all that difficult. 
there's not a lot of, there there's a there's a ton of technical overlay where the techniques are identical the only thing that changes a little bit is like the way you push the medium the way you move it around um and for instance like just take um let's just look at acrylic painting and oil painting you those are almost one for one where things get a little bit tricky is the introduction of using oil mediums to mix with your paint to change the consistencies but at the same time there, there's also mediums that you can mix into acrylic paints so it, it sort of balances out so that's really the only thing that has to change when you when you change mediums is just a little bit of technical information that you have to understand about the medium and i wouldn't say that by jumping from one medium to another you're inherently holding yourself back in any way it's just you're you're getting proficient in more than one medium at a time which i've done my entire life the reality is i like to use many mediums uh, they all have a different feel uh, each each medium i prefer in a different mood or whatnot uh, and i would i would not like to stop the other ones for instance Oil painting is my favorite medium. I love oil paint. I love working with it. I love the way that it looks. I even like the way that it smells, which is probably not a good thing because you shouldn't smell it. Um, but I, I like that it's slow to dry as opposed to something like acrylic or gouache that's really quick. Look, um, I, I like everything about it. I like the versatility of the surfaces that you can use. I mean, I could just list every aspect of oil paint, and I like it. There's not a single thing. There's there's really not a single thing I don't like about oil paint. But just because it's my favorite medium doesn't mean that I want to stop using pastel. I also really love pastel. I love I, I love the way pastel looks. I love the the soft velvety texture. Um. I would say what what's my least favorite thing about pastel is that there's there's quite literally one surface available. Uh, pastel matte is really the only surface that I will ever recommend until a new paper comes into existence that can even come close to it. Um, but yeah. Uh, anyways, that's sort of that's sort of my take on on that that question. That's my opinion. Yeah, I, I like using a lot, a lot of medium. I like, I mean, every week I use pastels and color pencils and oil paint, and and I do a lot of digital stuff behind the scenes that I wouldn't really call art, but um, I'm I'm pretty proficient in Photoshop, as you guys often see during the live critique. I think I think my biggest problem is that there's too many mediums that I enjoy and there's even more mediums that I want to get into like I, I want to I want to get some actual gouache paint not the acrylic gouache that I didn't realize I I purchased uh, some time ago I got acrylic gouache and there's a there's a really really big difference between uh, gouache and acrylic gouache uh, essentially acrylic gouache is just a matte acrylic paint it still works just the same it's just as it dries like just as fast and really limited and thick um but i, I want to try the regular gouache i almost bought some i don't know a few few weeks maybe a month ago or something like that when i was talking about it but i i just cannot add another thing 
I, I just cannot add another thing. I haven't even been able to uh, continue with my my Unreal Engine learning. I've just been so so consumed during the days this past week. Uh, is regular gouache better than acrylic gouache? Um, I, I couldn't tell you because I've never actually used regular gouache. Uh, when I when I bought the 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 acrylic gouache, I didn't I didn't know anything about gouache. I, I knew nothing about it, so I didn't even realize that there was a difference between gouache and acrylic gouache. And um, well, now I know. And so technically, I never used, I, I would say I've never used gouache because, like I said, acrylic gouache is essentially matte uh, acrylic paint. There's really no difference uh, that I could tell. Uh, what kind of paint is my favorite? Oil paint. Uh, you have a wonderful day as well, Norlene. Uh, hopefully I'll see you on Monday. Have a great weekend. Okie dokie. Um, yeah, I can continue using this shadow color here. Jump back to this pawn. Wait a minute. How many paintings? One, two, three, four, five, six. So seven? This will be... So I only have three more paintings after this for, for block two, three more paintings, I think. I didn't have a lot of time today to, uh, to be picky about my reference. Uh, but I actually like the how this came out. I, I sort of just thought of this. I, I thought of like the knight being um, like a politician and then the pawns being like a crowd. I didn't want to throw a whole bunch of pawns on in the reference because I didn't want this painting to take like six hours or anything. But uh, that was sort of my idea. The, the knight is sort of like a, po a politician on the podium or whatnot, or on the stage, and the pawns are the audience. So that was sort of my thought process when setting up this, uh, setting up this still life today. And I, I quite literally took one picture and that was it. I, I didn't even, I didn't even take several photos. I just took one picture and I was like, yep, that's going to be it. And, uh, here we are. I just I cropped it a little bit to make it to make it fill the the canvas in a nice in a nice way. Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, how do you draw shading on a person properly? Uh, so shading is not really. See, that's that mindset. I I get this from my wife too because my wife. Um, also would, would draw and stuff in the past and pretty early on, maybe like four, three or four years ago, she asked me if I could do a tutorial on shading. And the thing is, 
um, you need to get past this idea that shading is a thing because shading is not a thing. Um, there's no, you need to remove the, the word shading from your artistic vocabulary because what you need to understand about creating the illusion of light, because that's what, that's what an, an artist would call shading is, is light. Um, shading is what people think artists do to create light, but in reality, artists use values to create the illusion of light. And what you want to, to learn about when you look at a reference photo or look at an object in general is you want to divide it into its shadow and its light. So what you're seeing me do here right now is exactly that. I am painting only the shadows. So when you look at an object, a, a three-dimensional object, whether it's, I'm trying to find anything I have near me. I, I quite literally have nothing near me, which feels amazing, but makes it really hard for me to hold something to show you. Um, here, I have, I have this kneaded eraser. Uh, now this is really bad example because I have studio lights on to prevent shadows. But if I were to, I don't know, um, cover one light, so you can see how the shadow is on the left side. But if you divide this spherical shape in half, then one half would be the shadow side and the other side would be the light side. And so you simply divide your values into the shadows and the lights. So that's that's the way you want to think about it. Start start there. Cuz you'll you'll see with this painting here as as I progress once I finish filling in the shadows you'll see how much information it translates to the, the shape of the object itself. And that's what you want to focus on. You want to focus on the shapes. Um, I have been doing art for 27 years. I have been doing, I have, I have consistently been practicing art since I was six years old. Now there was, there was a few, a few years throughout those 27 years that I was doing a little less art than normal but um generally speaking it was it was rather consistent throughout the 27 years there was no time frame that i wasn't doing something artistic that lasted more than i don't know maybe maybe four or five months So there's maybe a couple periods of time within the past 27 years where I maybe didn't do anything artistic for about five months. Uh, but I couldn't even tell you it, uh, of, a, of that period. Uh, yeah, you're you're welcome. I wish there was a better name to call you, uh, twenty four. Um, if you if you have a name that you'd prefer me to refer to you as, just let me know. Otherwise, I'll just say twenty four. But um, you, there's no limitation on the questions that you can ask me. So 
feel free to ask as many questions as you'd like. I'm always happy to give advice to aspiring artists or people that just want to improve their artwork. You don't have to want to become a professional artist uh, to deserve good advice. So, Lara, okay, I can call. I can. I can do that. Pleasure meeting you, Laura. Yeah, shading is one of those really, really common questions that I get. You know, a lot of people want to improve their shading, but what, um, what that question actually means is that you want to get better at values so you want to you want to improve your understanding of creating the correct values that's that's really what you want to learn you just don't know how to word it because you haven't gotten to that point yet to understanding that it's not it's not shading that you want to learn it's actually values and um if uh, if you want a video that sort of breaks down those some of those artistic uh, words that you will come across and you should have a very good understanding of, I have a video. I have a video on my channel called Nine Words Every Artist Should Should Understand or Know or something like that. It's like nine words every artist should no um and i i break down i break down like contrast and saturation and value and i give you the definition and the example of what these words mean and the uh, the importance of understanding them cuz uh, once you understand the importance of what value is and how value relates to the overall contrast of your artwork, then immediately you will realize that shading is not something that you need to learn. Shading is not a thing to learn. It is simply uh, the uninitiated word to describe value and contrast. Uh, you've been having trouble getting back into art, and I was wondering what motivates you to create. I know I will have to find my own motivation, but wanted to see different point of view or get advice. Oh, that's a that's a really great question, uh, Catalina. Lovely name, by the way. Um. So, I think f for me. There's a difference between motivation and inspiration. Uh, motivation is sort of something that you can be talked into. You know, you have 
um, say you're like playing a sport and you have the fans and your coach and they're just rooting you on and telling you to go and run faster, play harder, all that stuff, that can motivate you to do those things. If I say, you know what, pick up your pencil, draw me, draw me an apple. Just draw me an apple. If you're sitting at your desk right now, grab a piece of paper if you're struggling, take a pencil, draw me an apple. Draw me the best apple you can. When you're done drawing me that apple, take a picture of it, post it on Instagram if you want, tag me in it, say, here's your apple, or email it to me, say, here's your apple, and I'll give you feedback on your apple. Maybe that will motivate you to pick up your pencil and draw me an apple. Maybe. Is it inspiring? Probably not. You're, you're not, you don't want to draw an apple. You're not inspired to draw an apple. The difference between motivation and inspiration is that you can be talked into doing something. You're motivated to do it. Motivation is, it can be pretty much described as being external, something outside of your outside of yourself pushing you to do something. And sometimes you're motivated to do things that you don't want to do. You know, you, you don't want to do the dishes, but you know, your 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 wife tells you to do the dishes or your your mom or your dad tells you to do the dishes. Um and they say, you know, if you do the dishes, you can I'll I don't know, I'll you, condition X gets you uh reward why okay so that can be a motivation um and if you allow motivation to get you to do art then you are relying on something other than yourself which is i think the worst way to do it i think external motivation can be helpful for instance i have external motivation i do this for a living i have students that rely on me giving lessons um, and I rely on them paying me for it. So uh, I have that external motivation that even when I'm not feeling all that ins inspired, I got to do it. It's, it. it's my job. It's what I do for a living. So that can get me through the less inspirational periods of time, but it doesn't feel the greatest. Ins inspiration, however, is internal. Inspiration is when you like something and because of the way you like it, you want to express it. And art is like the peak of expression. And so what I do for inspiration is I look at other art. That's what I do for the internal because sometimes you can't think of like what you want to do. Like you don't want to just draw an apple right? You don't want to draw a potato or a banana or a car or a portrait. You know, if sometimes, sometimes what inspires you to, to do something, you're not even sure what it is. For instance, some days I feel like just doing a still life. I just want to do a still life, but what? I don't know. So what I'll do is I'll go to Pinterest or I'll go to art station I'll look at other people's artwork, go to Instagram, look at other people's artwork, or I'll look at uh, photography and I'll look at still life pictures and I'll just, I'll just browse. And, and I, sometimes I'll see something that I don't want to do, but I might want to do later because I'm like, oh, that's really cool. And I'll save it. And I have folders upon folders upon folders on my computer where I have just thousands of references and artwork that... Uh, when I was browsing, I just liked. And when I'm feeling less than inspired, sort of, I, I, I seek out something that makes me feel inspired, makes me want to do something. And, and then that, that fire is lit, but that, that fire is internal. It's not external like motivation. So um, that's sort of the way that I go about it. And... You know, I was, I was losing a lot of inspiration, um, not that long ago. You know, it, it had been quite some time. It was like a, 
almost a year, almost a year where I was only relying on motivation. And some of you that have been around for a while know this. Uh, last year I was struggling. Last year was a, a big struggle. Um, I had no, no inspiration whatsoever to do really anything. And, um, the only thing that kept me going, like creating artwork was that I had to do it. You know, that, that external motivation to, to, to not grow, not, not go broke. Um, so, um, even, even with a persistent external motivation, if you fail to seek inspiration, you're not going to be satisfied. So I would, I would um, try to change your mindset a little bit on that. Don't seek motivation, seek inspiration. And then just get started. So find the artwork that you like, find the references that you, that you really like to look at, and then just pick up your pencil, pick up your paintbrush, and just get started. Because it's sort of like... Uh, it's like, it's like rolling a stone down the hill, okay? If it's a really heavy stone, and let's face it, art really isn't that heavy of a stone, but metaphorically speaking, let's say it's a really heavy stone. Getting that stone to start rolling down the hill is the absolute most difficult part. But the second you roll that stone over, the momentum pulls it down the hill. And you just get to sit there and watch it happen. So um, just, you, you know, get your lever out and, and push that stone over. You, you just got to roll that stone over, start painting, start drawing, start coloring, whatever it is. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be, it, it, it could be just a ball. You could just draw a ball. Or, or, or like I said earlier, grab a piece of paper, grab a pencil, draw me an apple. I promise you, in 10 minutes and 15 minutes and 20 minutes, if you're putting time and effort into that apple, you're going to lose track of time and you're just going to enjoy yourself. And then at the end, when you finish your apple, you're going to be like, wow, that was like the funnest apple I've ever drawn in my life. And it, and it all comes from just getting that boulder to flip over. It, you just got to get that boulder to flip over. And then once it starts rolling down the hill, it's easy. Yeah, Linda. I, I, Linda, she's she's definitely a person to talk about inspiration. I swear she does more artwork than I do. <laughs> she's always doing like extra artwork and all of the art club projects plus like five other projects at the same time. I can't even keep up with all your artwork, Linda. You do so much of it. Yeah, you do take a lot of pictures too. Yeah, you're welcome, Catalina. Yeah, absolutely. More than happy to to give you whatever advice I can. Now, I don't know if this, this applies to you at all, but um, also just remember that uh, there's, there's no such thing as competition in art. And we're, you, you shouldn't ever be doing, you shouldn't ever be doing it with the, uh, with the hope of it in um, impressing anyone. Just do what you enjoy and that will be the best work you ever produce.
yeah uh, i i'm right there with you uh Stu Jonath. i when i had a when i was in the military and when i was in college i that was basically what i would do as well um i didn't i didn't take on too big of projects cuz i just didn't have the energy for it so i mean but creating was my outlet so whether it was writing music or painting or drawing or something like that it was it was always there passing the time helping me relax cuz that's that's why i always did art i always did art because i just found it so relaxing uh not so much anymore that i will sit for 8 12 hours at a time drawing something but when i was in high school when i was in middle school sometimes i would just sit at the table and draw for hours upon hours from from daylight to sunset Uh, Catalina, I don't know if you use Discord at all, but I should have a Discord link in the video description. At least I hope I do. Um, let me, let me just grab a Discord link. So if anybody wants to join the Discord, here is the the invite link um you know when i'm not live streaming the discord i'm always in discord uh so you can always pop in there and um ask me questions there's all, all of the other art club members are also in there as well uh you can always chat with them uh, post your artwork get feedback and it's it's a bit better than like Facebook or any of the other social medias because there's no ads, there's no, there's no distractions, just pure conversation, you know, so it's um, really nice. I love using Discord. Uh, I've transitioned to using only Discord for communicating. Very rarely do I communicate on Facebook. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, feel free to hop in the Discord. If if you've never used the Discord, it's not real complicated or anything like that. Just think of it like uh think of it like um a continuous Facebook Messenger. That's essentially what it is. It's just a messenger. You go in there and chat with people, however. Oh, thank you, Sue so Jonath.
Anybody else have any questions for me? Or if you want to talk about something else, just bring up a topic, your, your, your choice. Excuse me. Oh, thank you. Yes, please. If uh, if you are enjoying the live stream, please give it a thumbs up for me. I I'm trying to get my channel to two hundred thousand subscribers by the end of the year. So if uh, if you're watching and you're not subscribed, it would be much appreciated if you help me out. Help me get to my 200,000 subscriber goal by the end of the year. Uh, drawing a spinal cord is drawing a bunch of cylinders with a stump on the back i wouldn't describe it as that now i you you can break down each of the bones in the spine and cervical spine as cylinders in the most like basic of shape but technically the spinal bones are not cylindrical uh they're more like like a donut with two spheres on the backside because they're they're if you look at it straight down it's more of a triangular shape like a rounded triangular shape and then there's like two lumps here and then the spine is uh, the actual spine bone is hollow where the spinal cord actually is because you said spinal cord, the spinal cord is actually just a band of nerves that that uh, come down from your brain f on the inside of the actual um, cervical bones, the spinal bones. Uh, what's a tip for drawing hands? Hmm. Uh, there's a there's like a million tips on drawing hands. Uh, but the the way that I approach hands is I break it down into the palm, which also includes the first joint of the thumb. So if you take this shape right here, it's sort of the shape of a shovel. So this is flat here at the wrist. This is flat. And then it sort of curls up a little bit on both sides. And then there's an arch here. See this arch where it sort of goes around the, the fingers? Well, this arch is symmetrical here when you're looking at the inside of the hand and also on the knuckles. The arch also exists. This arch is very important because this arch is static. 
see when I make a fist, there's still that arch. You can see the, the, the knuckle here sticks out the most. So that arch, very important. This arch also matches the knuckles. So this same arch happens right here at the first or the second joint of the fingers, the third joint of the fingers, and then the fingertips themselves. Whether my hand is like this or like this, notice that the arch remains the same. Not only that, but the arch, if you continue it, comes to the first joint or the second joint of the thumb. And if you follow this arch, then the tip of the thumb also lines up with the arch. So follow the arch. And so if I want to change the pose of the hand, say I want to point. If I point, notice the arch is still there. Now these fingers are hidden, but if they were open, if they were open, there's still the arch. So whether it's one finger or two fingers, the arch still remains. It's just these two fingers are hidden. If there's three fingers, the arch is still the same. So if I want to do, um, if I want to do like a closed hand, notice the arch stays the same. If the hand is turned, notice the arch stays the same. If the hand is turned like this, well, this is more of a straight line, but the arch still happens. You can see the pinky is falling behind a little bit. So no matter where you change it, if you if you recognize the arch that occurs in in the hand then you can you can manipulate those arches so you just have this one shovel shape and then one two three four arched lines and so you can use those arched lines to change the pose of the hand and as you get better at it you'll be able to uh, manipulate that arch in three dimensions Oh, hey, what's up, John? Good to see you. How's your how's your week going? I'm going to give myself just a little buffer here with the night because I want to cut the night out a little bit more from the the wooden block so I'm going to leave a small gap first thing in there I was trying to figure out what I did with my shadow here Oh yeah, that sounds like the most fun that anybody could ever have ever. I love I love talking to banks. Yeah. Um I'm doing pretty good. I put uh so much work into my studio space. As you can see, my my desk uh has a new tabletop. Um I rebuilt my entire setup. I did a ton a ton of cable management. Um, I mounted my lights so I don't have these rinky dink mount, uh, these light stands beside my desk. So my, my whole space is just so much wide, more wide open. Uh, my monitor stand slash camera and microphone stand, uh, I took that apart and uh, painted it. And um, what else did I do? I just I just organized things. It took it took so long. It took so so long. Um, all day Thursday or all day Wednesday, all day Thursday, and I, I really mean all day Thursday. I think I woke up at like like eight or started around eight in the morning on Thursday, and I did not finish until like 
21 or something like that. And I'm still not 100% done. Still not 100% done. Um, it just uh, was so tiring. Um, my lower back is killing me right now. My my sciatic nerve is just on fire from like leaning over and painting uh, the stand and stuff. Just leaning over, just horrible posture while trying to paint my uh, monitor stand. But um, it's all good. It's all good. It's actually really nice to sit in uh, this comfy chair. But um, yeah, added the added the green screen. Uh, still fine tuning that. I technically need a third light. I, I really, I, I really don't want to add a third light because I don't know where I'm going to put it. But I, I sort of need a, a third light behind me because my green screen is really poorly lit, which unfortunately makes it a little artifacty. You can see some artifacts around the edges of my face. Um, I'm looking for perfection, so. Uh, I need a better light in the back, and that will help cut the green screen out even cleaner. Because right now my camera just has a hard time seeing it, because it's it's kind of a dark green. And if I move, you can you can sort of see it start to come in. Yeah, there you go. So it's it's kind of dark behind me, unfortunately. Uh, maybe a standing setup? No, I won't do a standing setup again. I, I had a standing setup a couple years ago. Um, I had it for, I don't know, I had it about for eight months or something like that. The problem is I traded sitting too much for standing too much. But now I, now I, I invested in a really good chair. So I have very good lumbar support. Um, uh, my... Uh, pelvic bone is, um, I, I have a special cushion for my pelvic bone because um, I had lower back surgery two years ago. I think it was two years ago. Um, and yeah, so I have, I, I invested in a much better chair and because I go to the gym three to four times a week, plus I am riding my bike a lot more often and just exercising a lot more in general, I've balanced out the sitting. So um, everything is, everything's good the way that I have it now. Uh, you take care, Laura. Oh, hey there, Rain. Thank you. Glad you like it. Uh, Godfrey, welcome. Welcome to the live stream. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, yeah, this this chair was probably my favorite my favorite investment to my studio space. I got it from the UK. Um I think it was I think it was around I think it was around 800 pounds. So it was it was rather pricey, but um 
for the for the price of my comfort while sitting here at my desk, um, I I would have paid twice that amount. I'm I'm overall very very happy with the the quality of the chair. Because for, for someone that spends as much time uh, sitting at the desk as I do, um, the uh, quality of the chair, the brand is, I guess you can't really read it, it's uh, Secret Lab. The brand is Secret Lab. Um, But anyways, like I was saying, if, if you're sitting at a desk as much as you are basically sleeping, then you want to think of your chair as being like a second bed because, you know, you want your bed to be really comfortable. A lot of people will spend a considerable amount of money on their beds, on their mattresses, just so that they can um, sleep better. Well, a chair is pretty much the same thing if you're spending if you're spending more than eight hours a day sitting in it. And I would say I probably sit about eight hours a day. Sometimes even more, depending on what I'm doing. But yeah, I, I, and I know that sitting for eight hours a day is a long time, which is why I try to... Uh, combat that with exercise. So if you if you sit for eight hours a day and you don't exercise, then almost no matter what chair you have, it's going to not be that great for your health. Um, this is the... I'm trying to find the name. I think this is the Omega. Oops. I didn't mean to take my pillow off. Go back on there. I'm trying to find the name. Hold on. Ah, uh, yeah, this is the Omega. Oh, you can't see it. it this is the 2020 Omega. So we have the same same chair. Uh, but I also uh, so this pillow here and the, the lumbar support pillow comes with the chair, but the uh, pelvic pillow that I have, uh, I ordered that off of Amazon. Yeah, the, um, that I needed, I, that I needed to order myself and that honestly, that made the biggest change. The, the pelvic, the pelvic support pillow, um, is shaped like a horseshoe kind of, that is, that's the, the chair that saves my back, especially after getting surgery. So. Oh, do he? Well, the shadows are done, so I need to clean my brush. Yeah, I didn't want, I didn't, I didn't want a flashy chair. Black and gold's a bit, a bit much. If they had purple and gold, then maybe. Purple and gold, I find to be far more appealing than black and gold. Black and gold just feels too, um, too UFC. To for me. I, I liked just the simple black and gray. I thought the black and gray fit my space real nicely. Because I, I mean, 
everything at my desk is black, gray, and white, so it it fits real nicely into my my space here. You know, the funny thing is I I never saw anybody sitting in this chair before. Um and I was searching for like I was I was searching for like really good gamer chairs or gaming chairs because they they make the best they make uh, gaming chairs are the best chairs uh because they're specifically designed for people that have no life and sit at their desk 24 7 playing video games uh, so um when i came across this brand and the reviews and everything like that that's why i decided to get it and then since i've had it like almost every other YouTube video that I um, that I see, uh, the YouTuber is sitting in a secret lab chair. All right, let's see here. Um, let's. I'm gonna actually cheat a little bit on this project, but don't tell anybody, okay? My my secret cheat technique that I'm gonna use. And I decided to do this because of the last project. I'm actually going to paint the highlights on the chess pieces with an admixture. That way I can add the pinpoint highlights. So I decided to mix the, the extreme light and moderate light for the admixture. And I'm going to paint the chess pieces that. That way I can use the extreme light only where the, the brightest highlights are. And I'm just going to tr uh, treat the chess piece like one big gradient. Because technically it is just one big gradient. Oh yeah, that is super gangster, John. <laughs> Yeah, I would I would not ever want I mean even if it was an animal leather, I still wouldn't want leather material. I I never understood how leather could be luxury because it's like as soon as it's over as as soon as it's over like 17 degrees, it's far too warm and sticky. It's like how is that comfortable? I think suede is a far more luxurious material uh, for a chair. Oh, hey there, Remy.
yeah, it is probably a bit colder in Sweden than here in Poland. What, what kind of temperatures do you see in the summertime in Sweden? What would be like an abnormally high temperature? I'd say like an abnormally high temperature here would be like anything above 27. So like 28 to 32 would be rather uncommon for Poland. I don't feel like it gets very hot here, which I like. It never gets, it almost never gets uncomfortably warm. The weather here is rather nice. Twenty five is high, yeah, yeah, okay. I'd say it's about 25 right now, actually, here. I'm going to check. Uh, it's actually 27-ish. 20, yeah. It's like 27 right now. And it, this doesn't feel too bad, but the humidity is 43%. I guess it's not supposed to rain today. That's kind of surprising. So it's a, it's a little bit warmer than I thought. I personally I think 25 is a, is a good uh, a great summer temperature. I don't, I don't know if I'd want the, the regular summer temperature to be lower than 25. I like a little bit of heat. At least for a small portion of time throughout the year. Right now it's 84. And I think 84 would be I think 84 is around 27 actually. No, maybe maybe 26 20 25 26 something like that. I I'm trying to convert based off memory. Um not mathematically correct. I can never remember the equation. I think it's, uh, isn't it like one, like times 1 1.8 plus 32 or something like that? I think it's something like that. Like 
whatever the Celsius degree is times 1.8-ish plus 32, I think. I can never I can never remember that calculation. Forgive me one sec. Sorry about that. Well, multiplying by 1.8 is approximately double. I mean, it's a little less than double, but I know that it's not. It's not double. I know it's like a fraction. Anybody see that uh, that new movie, The Gray Man, with uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to remember the actor's name. the The dude that played Captain America, he's a Chris, right? Chris, um, I can never remember his last name, but it has that guy it has Ryan Gosling, and it has the one. Uh, the one lead actress from from Knives Out, I can't remember her name either, but she's amazing. And then also Billy Bob Thornton. They had a it had a a really great cast. My wife and I we watched it last night. And for a uh, super secret international spy type movie, it was it was quite good. Um, I mean. You're you're never really looking for like the the most amazing original plot when you go with the the spy movies, but it was it was well done. I thought it was well done. I I could, I could recommend it with popcorn. Uh, did I see Demon Slayer? Oh, Gray Man is actually a series of books. I could I could see that being a thing for sure. Yeah. I did not see Demon Slayer. 
I had never heard of Demon Slayer. Is that a movie or a series? Is that something you told me I should have looked up? Also, there's two two seasons. Two seasons. Kimatsu no Yaiba? Right? Yeah, the OA is super good. I, The fact that they ended that series was just heartbreaking. Like, the OA was just so uniquely strange and magnificent. Oh, so good. All right. Yeah, I'll 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 check out Demon Slayer. Yeah, uh, it's been a long time since I watched uh an an anime series. I think the last one that I watched was Cowboy Bebop for like the 100th time. The the real one, not the not the nonsense Netflix garbage fire. Usagi? Let me, uh, let me just do this. Usabi, oh, Usagi, Usagi drop. Oh, I like the style. I like the art style. Yeah, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to put that on the list as well. Yeah, slice of life is my probably my one of my favorite genres.
I keep I keep switching pawns. I keep jumping to the other one. Only a hundred? I have no idea how many I've watched. I, I've watched uh, far too many to, to remember. <clears throat> Most of which I don't even know the name of. There used to be, well, there still is technically, there's this, um, there's this torrent website called Baka BT. And gosh, I've been a member of that site since 2008. Yeah, since 2008. Um, back then, you could make an account, but now it's like invite only. So it's like a private, private site. Um, and I used to just go there and watch quite literally everything that was uploaded. I still have my account, but, uh, I think it's like blocked or something I haven't downloaded from there in more years than I can think of probably since like 2012 I feel like this this mixture here feels a little gummy. I should probably add some oil to it, but I'm procrastinating. I'm trying to make the best out of it. It's just a little sticky. It still layers pretty well though.
Uh, what have you been working on recently, John, by the way? Are you going to get back into doing your Evolve stuff, or or what? You, you've been obsessed with uh, the digital art. When are you going to get your, your, your brushes wet again? No, I haven't played around with the color yet. Um, I got three more paintings, four more paintings. I don't know. A uh, block two. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna stick to the program. Make my life easy. It's um. I I already have enough on my plate. I don't need to play around. I still have uh, plenty of paintings that I need to, to get through, so. Oh, thanks, CC. Well, I guess I can pull up my reference photo again. When are, when are you going to get your paintbrushes back out, Cece? You still have a... You still have, what, three or two paintings left in block one? You got to get, get those paintings done. Block two feels a lot better than block one because you get to be a bit more creative setting up your own still lifes and stuff. It feels like you're actually doing your own your own artwork. Whereas block one feels a bit too in the box with their reference photos that they supply you. Oh, just, just break it down. Just break the painting down. You'll be fine. You didn't lose anything. You just gotta, you just gotta get started. Once, once you get the paint mixed up and you start putting it down on the canvas, you'll be, you'll be good to go. It will come back to you. The cat on the block. Oh, you know what? I just I just gave that painting away yesterday. So you have five more paintings left. Yeah, I gave that painting away yesterday.
uh, will I be watching Diaz versus Hamza? Yeah, absolutely. I don't know anybody that won't watch that fight. That's going to be wild. I mean, that that's that's got to be a wild fight. I honestly though, I think the matching up is pretty awful. I I almost feel bad for Nate. Cuz I mean, Nate is an absolute warrior, but um Oh, that's what's happening. Hold on a second, I got to fix something. Yeah, the lighting is the lighting is changing. It's messing with my my chroma key. Okay. I didn't I didn't mean to switch the screen. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> yeah, Nate Nate is a tank. Um but he's taken so much damage. Like he's taken so much damage. That is driving me nuts. I I need to I need to get a better light set up or something. I don't know. The, the time of day changes the light just enough so that the color changes and the chroma key stops working properly. Yeah, it keeps doing it too. That drives me crazy. That just, that small drop in quality uh, is like a, it's just an, a, an itch in my brain. And I don't like, I don't like to see it. I spent too much time. I, I spent too much time getting this set up. I had to iron that green screen too. <laughs> it's been like 40 minutes ironing. Pretty bad, isn't it? Let me see if I can. Let me see if I can fix this. This isn't ridiculous. Ridiculous. All right, hopefully that works.
uh give me my top three favorite my or my top three fighters um i would say yuri prohoshka um uh shock rock rachmanov and um, i mean i want to say hamzat but i think i think i want to see where he goes first but i do love to watch him fight and I always anticipate his next one. Um, yeah, hard to say for sure. I'm trying to think. I just have a lot. Um, Piotr Jan, maybe? Piotr Jan? I think he's probably one of the best. I mean, there's the last title fight was kind of a joke, but uh, whatever. He's still the champion in my eyes. Sterling is a Sterling is a poser. Oh, Patty Pimblet. Yeah. Oh my gosh. He's so fun to watch. I, yeah, I think actually I, I might have to put Patty number one. He's, I mean, he's not just a great fighter, but he's a great character and he seems like a really cool dude. A really, really cool dude. I even watch I even watch some of his vlogs on his channel. Cause he, he's just a really great guy. I, I kinda wish he had subtitles on his YouTube videos because like his his accent's so thick that I only catch about forty percent of the words. When he when he's like talking with his friends, talking to his camera or whatever, and he's not he's he's even less enunciated in his words. I can almost not even understand that he's speaking English. Oh, hey, what's up, Mad Gaming?
man, those first, uh, there's those first two hours working on this as it's flown by. Yeah, I, I really like Israel Adesanya as well. He's he seems like a really cool cool guy. I like his fighting style also. Yeah, he has a real he has a he has a real kung fu kind of style. Just sort of free free flowing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh he's such a weeb. But I, I like that about his personality. Yeah, I think he makes a really great champion for middleweight. Oh, uh, let's see. Got to do this value now. Finish the cube. I don't know if I'm going to put the background in today. I haven't heard from my gym mates on when we're going to the gym. But usually it's around 17, 1730. No idea. Uh, do I do the gradients and blending in a separate session? Um, I, I do it after I fill in the foundational shapes. So I will do the gradients while the paint is still wet. But uh, you can do the gradients in another layer, even if the paint dries. It's not a big deal. Um, the thing is, your paint will dry at different speeds, and it will get, like, sometimes you will get it and it will be blotchy. Like, some, depending on the oil mixture, uh, will change the glossiness of the paint as it dries. And so you'll get an uneven glossiness because you can't, perfectly mix the oil into the paint. So there will always be like some flatter spots or some more matte areas versus glossy, but that's not a big deal because you can always, um, well, actually you can just take your oil medium and brush it over top and then let it dry, but that'll give you a really glossy look, or you can use a workable, a workable varnish or something or just paint continuously until you're done and then varnish it at the end. And the varnish will even out all of the matte versus glossiness. But usually I do these paintings in a single sitting. I'm just wondering if I'm meeting my friends at the gym or not. And if, if so, what time? Uh, because that will determine on whether or not I get to finish this painting. Honestly, I think I would prefer to go to the gym tomorrow. 
because my back hurts. But I wouldn't mind going to do some cardio since I need to do that. Yeah, with, with oil paint, you don't ever have to finish a painting in a single sitting. Because even if you... Uh, even if you do finish a painting in a single sitting, there will always be an unevenness to... Uh, there, there will always be a subtle unevenness to the glossy versus matte satin look of the paint, uh, especially once you introduce other colors or even other brands of oil paint. So varnishing is always a, uh, a necessary end step to even out the paint at the very end. Tom thought it was funny that I like the UFC. I yeah, I love UFC. Like I really enjoy watching it. I watch it every week. Uh how difficult do I think painting frosted glass could be? I I don't think it'd be like inherently more difficult than painting anything else. I mean, painting is painting. I don't, I don't, what would be, I don't even know what would be difficult about painting frosted glass. Are you, wait, just to be clear, are you talking about painting frosted glass or painting on frosted glass? Because the way I read it, you're asking me like actually painting on it. To make it look like frosted glass. Um, well, uh, I would have to see what you're talking about because I have an idea of frosted glass and it might not be what you're looking at. Uh, hi there, Nick Hill. How would you make a painting look like frosted glass? Um, let me Google frosted glass. Because odds are it's just value. Yeah, so the circumstances would be very yeah, send it to me in Discord. The the circumstances in are very dependent on the scene you're trying to create. Uh, a lot of what makes frosted glass frosted glass is context. So it has a it has a really rather uh, ambiguous texture and look to it. But given a particular environment that it's in, uh, it would either look like frosted glass or look like something else. Let me check. Did you send it in Discord? 
Where'd you send it? General chat? I don't see it. I, I don't see it. Did you send it yet? I really should use a bigger brush. Getting ridiculous. Just remember, everything, it doesn't matter what the object is, what the object looks like. Whether it's a crystal ball, frosted glass, a gemstone, a brick wall, sidewalk, pavement, a rocky road. They, every single object and subject can be broken down into three components. You have value. The most important component of all is value. The second component and the second most important component is texture. And then the third and final component, which is not as important and barely important at all, is color. Those are the three aspects of every single object ever that you will ever be able to create artistically. Value texture, color. If you're working in black and white, that's why color is so non-important. Because if you're just working monochromatically, then color doesn't make a difference because you're working monochromatically. So you have value and you have texture. Isolate the values, the shapes, the values and the shapes. Create the values and the shapes and then apply the texture. We, we have a tendency to overthink what we perceive to be complex. So as soon as Cece sends me this photo of frosted glass or whatever it is she's talking about, pretty much know that even though I haven't looked at it yet, odds are I'm going to break it down into values, texture, and then color if it's relevant. Give me a second. Okay, it's in the art chat. Uh, let's see, let's see. Oh, okay, okay, frosted glass. All right, so what distinguishes frosted glass is context. So when you look at this picture, Cece, that you sent me, the frosted glass doesn't really have any texture because it's smooth. It's inherently smooth. The reason that it looks like frosted glass in comparison to the clear glass right next to it is that the shapes change. Notice that the shapes in the clear glass are all sharp and hard-edged, whereas the frosted glass is all gradient. The, also, the frosted glass acts as a diffuser for the color behind it. So it's the soft nature of the gradients and the lack of hard edges 
that create that frosted glass look. Uh, when I say texture, you mean like edge decisions? No. Texture is not edge, it has nothing to do with edges. Texture is the correct way to say detail. See, um, detail is a terrible word to use because detail is not real. When people think of detail, they think of a lot of stuff in their artwork. And a lot of people associate realism with more detail, which is not the case at all. Um, detail is the amount of subjects. So if I wanted to make a more detailed painting, I would add all the pawns and more chess pieces and more shapes and I just have a bunch of stuff. I just have a bunch of stuff, like 80 pawns and five knights and 20 cubes. And there'd just be pawns and knights and cubes all over the paper. Detail is, think of detail as the number of subjects. Right now there's five subjects. There's three pawns, a cube, and a knight. More detail would be 20 pawns, four knights, and 10 cubes or whatever. That's more detail. Texture is what people usually refer to as detail, which is incorrect. Um, texture is this. So if I wanted to draw a piece of canvas paper, I would map out the value changes, which is like this pure white and then this subtle gray. And then I'd come in here and I'd add this these texture lines, which I would just do cross hatching. Texture is made up of three components. You have dots, dashes, and lines. And that's it. Every texture can be replicated with either dots, dashes, lines, or a combination of those. And detail is meaningless with the exception of the number of subjects in your scene. Which is why I often try to communicate that you shouldn't use the word detail because nobody uses that word correctly in art. So right now, there is zero texture on any of my objects here. I've added zero texture. And in fact, there will be no texture on my objects because that's not the rules of the Evolve program. The Evolve program has not told you in block two to add texture. It's simply shapes and values which are the two most important aspects of the art, of, of any art. Value is always number one. The most important aspect of your artwork is value. So they just tell you, they just teach you to focus on value. Just just do the values because it's the most important part. Did I clarify that enough for you, John? About what texture is? Uh, and if anybody else has any questions or uncertainties, uh, let me know. I'm 
more than happy to clarify further for everyone's sake because it is very important to understand i'm i'm going to be doing a tutorial hopefully in the next week or so um breaking down sort of uh, frequency separation which is the concept of isolating texture from shapes So if you don't know what I'm talking about, you will know soon enough when I do the tutorial. Yeah, understanding... Uh, Understanding the separation of shapes and, and texture immediately makes it possible for you to replicate everything with little to no effort. You just simply have to build that understanding first. It's just sort of hard to convey clearly. Okie dokie. I think... I think I can start gradients now. I'll start with the shadow gradients. I always forget to go back to my reference photo. All right, I will do some of the darker shadows, I guess. So here. here I'm actually using add mixtures this time make my life just a little bit easier
Now just soften some of the transition by simply tapping it. Oh, you're welcome, Katrina. Uh, thanks for popping by and saying hello. Let's uh, go ahead and do the same thing on these pawns over here. I'm going to do this a little bit quick. I'm not going to try to make it perfect. Okie dokie. And I'll just soften that just a little bit. I don't really think I changed a whole lot, but it's just the beginning of altering the shadows. Yeah. Still what? Yeah. Now for the actual gradient, I will use that. Just clean my brush a little bit here. And I'm literally just going to tap the gradient in. Just very gently.
What else you guys want to talk about today? Uh, for anybody that's new in chat, you know, don't don't hesitate to introduce yourself. I'd love to say hello and welcome you. And of course, if you ever have any questions, I am more than happy to answer them. Anything new with Udon? Um, he's getting big. Udon is a beefcake of a snake right now. Um, I fed him Wednesday. Yeah, I, f I fed him Wednesday. And it was probably his largest meal that I've given him. It was a little bit, it was probably closer to 45 grams. Uh, usually, I, usually it's around 34-ish, 35. So, um, he, he had his work cut out for him. Uh, for a while, I didn't think that he ate it because, um, he, he had a hold of it and he was sort of flailing a little bit, trying to get it positioned. And he, for whatever reason, this is the first time he did it, he, he decided to drag it into his cave, but he was struggling because he had it by the shoulder and he was trying to pull it in through the hole sideways. So it was not fitting, it was not working. And so I was trying to help him a little bit. Uh, he managed to get it eventually. And then he stuck his head out of his cave like he always does. And so I thought, I thought, did he just drag it in there and then just not eat? And um, I had, to, so I had to check. And so I took his little, I took the top of his cave off and he ate it. Um, but he was so fat, he couldn't crawl out through the hole. So I left the lid off for him. <laughs> he was so fat, he couldn't get out. And I don't know if he wanted to get out, but um, he couldn't. If he wanted to, he could not. So I I removed the lid and I didn't put it back on. And eventually he felt too exposed and he crawled into his, his warm cave. Um, but uh, yeah, he, he was big and fat uh, Wednesday. And I, I, I don't know, he's probably still quite beefy right now. But he's sleeping right now obviously. This is his sleepy time. I was going to take him out yesterday, but our visitors didn't want to see him. Too afraid. I want to take him out and get some photos of him. I should weigh him as well. I, I should weigh him. Yeah, he's going to need bigger hides. Yeah, he's going to need bigger hides very soon because he's, he's a growing boy. He is growing so fast. Yeah, he's growing a lot faster than I initially anticipated. I thought that he'd be fine in there without any changes for a year, but I am starting to think that will not be the case. I'm pretty 
I'm pretty confident that will not be the case. I'm probably going to have to end up getting him a new enclosure much sooner than I originally estimated. I thought that he'd be able to stay in there for at least a year. I had every intention of of building his enclosure next summer, but um, I probably won't be able to get away with that. I'll probably have to do it before the end of the year. How many kilos can he get? Um, I think he gets around three. Yeah, I think I think uh, full grown he'll probably be around three kilos. Right now he should be about half a kilo, maybe maybe six hundred grams. If I had to estimate. I'd say he's probably about 500 to 600 grams. I mean, after after eating on Wednesday, he could be 700. That's as big as your large bunny. Well, when he's full grown, he basically eat your large bunny. <laughs> no, he he won't ever eat food that big, but um But yeah, he'll he'll get pretty big. I I'm sort of totally guessing about his final weight i have no idea how big he'll get because there's such a there's a rather large variation in size possibilities like sometimes they can be really small but he's already he's he's already grown so much that i don't think he's going to be a small one i think he's going to be a pretty decent size when he's when he's full grown if there's any indication of how they grow when they're young then he'll he'll probably get fairly large oh, I forgot to do the shadows on the night. Why did I forget to do that? Let me go ahead and do that really quick. Uh, when am I going to get, wait, when am I going to do diss track like the other YouTubers? <laughs> Never. Never. You will never hear me sing. My wife doesn't even get to hear me sing.
every every once in a while my wife will hear me whispering some of the lyrics to my songs that I'm listening to, but never truly hear me sing. She's, she has somehow convinced herself that I'm not that bad at singing. But unfortunately for her, uh, my, my sisters have traumatized me enough to, to convince me otherwise. So I don't, I don't sing for anybody. My sisters made fun of me too much when I was a kid, when I would, when I would try singing as a kid that I just, I just don't do it. I don't, I don't do the singing stuff anymore. Oh, I forgot that. How did I forget that shadow? You don't ever remember me singing? That's because you made fun of me as soon as I did it and I never did it again. Yeah, you can always rap if you can't sing, that's true. <laughs> Dad ruined you as far as singing goes. I don't know. Dad Dad dragged me to enough karaoke growing up that I 
I just can't do it. I would I wouldn't be able to do karaoke. Not in a million years. I'm not I'm not willing to get drunk enough to feel okay with singing karaoke. Yeah, dad dad's karaoke obsession. Yep. I don't know what's going on at the bottom of my night, but it's weird. I'll just leave it. I'll just leave it like that. I think that's good enough. It still goes every week. Yeah. All right. I can soften up some of those gradients now. Just got to clean my brush off. Clean brush, that's the best way to work your gradients. Keep it clean too, just keep wiping it off on the paper towel. Let me get a new paper towel.
that's I think that's good enough. That's good enough. Let's um maybe soften the gradients on the the pawns a little bit. One second, everyone. Sorry about that. I'm back. Hello, uh, Super LGW. Not not sure what that means, but welcome, welcome to the live stream. Glad to see you. Hope you're having a good day. All right, let's add highlights. Subtle, tiny highlights. Let's start with the night highlight. Highlight. It's the, the subtlest of highlights. Highlight. Highlight. They're very, very, very subtle highlights. But more than the last chess piece has had. But I but I cheated. I, I didn't follow the rules exactly. All right, I think that's going to do it for the pawns and everything. Um, I will, well, actually, maybe I can add a little bit of a reflection to some of this just to make it pop out a little bit more. I'll just use whatever color.
the chess olympics or the olympiad is actually happening right now round round one started today actually for the chess olympiad now's a good time to get into chess and start watching it America's team looking pretty good, got to say. Got Wesley So, Levon Aronian, Fabiano Caruana, um, Jeffrey Zhang. Yeah, we got, got lots of strong chess players on the U.S. team. I was actually watching it before uh, I started streaming. Oh, you have a lovely day as well, Chandri. Appreciate you coming by and hanging out. I just realized that face of the cube is going to be the same value as the as the table. Oh, is that so, John? I beat uh, I beat a candidate rated player uh, this week. Um, I guess he'd be about 2,000 FIDE rated, uh, 2,200 uh, in the Polish Federation. I, I beat him in this line uh, out of the Budapest Gambit. I was over the board as well. I, I went to the park. I went to the park and took my chess set and I was playing with my friend and um, he just walked up and asked if he could play and and I crushed him.
I was playing so bad that other day that you you and I played, John. I was playing so bad. I swear, I my brain wasn't even turned on. <laughs> yeah probably actually uh i was playing like my d or f game yeah i was playing so poorly I'm still I'm still working on turning my chess brain back on. I have to I have to like refrain from playing video games or trying to learn something else. I have to just focus on chess. I only have I only have like 2 weeks, less than 2 weeks. Or no, exactly 2 weeks. I have exactly 2 weeks before my tournament, so I got to get my, my chest brain going 100% because I do not want, I, 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 I want to win this tournament. I want to, I won my last tournament, but I was very dissatisfied with my overall play. I should have won by a much larger margin. I need to convert my winning positions. That's one thing I, I need to do absolutely is convert my winning positions. Which is a lot harder to do. Uh, it's a lot harder to do that than to just say I'm going to do that. I'm going to put a little shadow line down here just to help separate the cube from the table. It didn't even occur to me that the face of this cube is the same value as the table surface. Actually, I played one game today. 
uh, and it was like 96% accuracy. It was like really super solid game. My opponent made a single blunder, and I completely took advantage of it, and I never lost the advantage. Um, I was I was black, and he played e four. I played the Karo Khan as black, and it was uh, it was actually what's called the hillbilly attack, which is honestly the hillbilly attack is just uh nonsense that people play when they don't know what to do against the Karakon. They're just so used to playing the Italian. And I crushed him. Got to a point where it was checkmate and checkmate and four. And then I he made one move, and then it was checkmate in three, and then I made a move, and he resigned. He res he resigned when it was checkmate in two. get some water. My wife my wife said she was making me tea. Uh, that was a while ago. So I don't know what is happening. Although it's kind of warm for tea anyway, so I won't complain. Although they're awfully quiet. I think my wife left. Yeah, I think she left. <laughs> my mother-in-law was here as well, so that's why I'm saying they.
Anybody got any fun plans for the weekend? I got I got nothing. I got nothing. I might I actually I might go to the park. Yeah, I might the uh I think I I think I mentioned it a couple weeks ago that I rode to uh the Hoju Park with my friend and I took him specifically to that park because that's where I would always go to play chess. And it's a pretty long bike ride. It's it's about a 30 minute bike ride to get there. If you ride quickly, um, if you ride at like a normal person pace, then it's probably like 40 minutes. So it takes a while to get there. It's like 15 kilometers. Um, and when we got there, the, the chess boards were gone. They, they took them out. And when I got home that later that evening, I told my wife that they had taken them. There was nobody there playing chess. And I was like, oh my goodness, what is happening? And, um, my wife messaged the park coordinator or whatever and and asked why the chess boards were taken away and they never responded and then um the other day i was playing chess at a different park a park that i didn't even know people played chess at and uh one of the guys said that they're they're putting in new chess tables in hoju park and that's why they removed them and i haven't been back in a few weeks um, I mean, it doesn't take long to, it shouldn't take long to replace tables. Uh, so maybe they're already up. I should probably ride to the park this weekend and see if, uh, see if the new chess tables are, are up and being used. It'd be nice to play on some new chess tables. I mean, the chess tables were extra junky so it's nice that they put the thought into replacing them after who knows how many years i mean they were they were made out of stone they were stone tables and they were literally crumbling to pieces so how long that takes you know who knows but probably a while so just goes to show how how long they've been there before they finally replaced them oh that sounds fun nothing like cleaning mud out of camping gear i want to go camping I, I love camping I've been wanting to go camping for a while. I don't have any camping gear though, and I don't want to buy any. There, there's so many forests and stuff around here. It'd be nice to just go for a nice day hike, you know, sort of get lost in the forest and then camp out make some food over the fire and a cast iron skillet and go to sleep, wake up, eat some breakfast, make some tea, hang out in the woods by the fire, and then hike back. Or even, even a couple of days, maybe. Do like a two or three day camping. You miss fishing? Wow, that's, that's a lot. Yeah, I miss I miss fishing with my dad. I mean, I won't 
eat fish, obviously, but for the um there's there's I, I don't care how long I've I've been vegan. Uh no no amount of animal uh activism is going to convince me not to go fishing with my dad. I will still always and forever do that for as long as I can, as much as I can. Yeah, it really yeah, I totally agree, John. I'll just I'll just throw out um a sinker with a bobber on it. Why is the cast shadow on the left pond lighter? Uh, because of the light source. The light source is artificial light, and it's just lighter in the reference photo. Yeah, it's just lighter. And I don't... I mean, I used the correct value. I got, I got to follow the rules. I got, I got to follow the rules. I don't have an option. Even though I broke the rules on this painting. Yeah, the... Um, I just I just realized that I had my reference photo lightened. Yeah, I'm going to change that. That's I th I thought it was the light source. I mean, it in the reference photo it's a little bit lighter, but it's not this this light. So, I'm going to change it. I I just realized after all this time The entire time I've been looking at my reference photo, it's only been 80%. So my, my contrast in the reference photo is significantly higher now. <laughs> Uh, you see, when I when I do, uh, I take the reference photo. What I do is I take the reference photo, and then I make it eighty uh, percent, or I make it 
20, I have 15% translucent. Okay, 15% translucent. I put a white, uh, a white layer behind it. And then I use a second transparent layer over top of it to create the line art. And the line art shows up better. And I forgot, I forgot to change the, uh, the reference photo back to a hundred percent opacity. And once I did that, the, uh, the, the shadow doesn't look weird. The, the shadow's dark again. I've I've done that before too. I've I've done I've I've forgotten to change the opacity on a portrait actually. I was I was looking at the reference for like three hours, replicating the, the colors and the values, and for the entirety of that time, my reference was at eighty five percent opacity. And uh that's that's a huge difference. Especially since I was working on the skin tones. Could you could you just imagine working on a portrait for 2 hours and the colors you're matching are 15% whiter than what they're supposed to be? So I was, I was matching my colors and everything for like two or three hours, 15% in the wrong direction. <laughs> I need to I need to not do that again. So in the reference photo this shadow is and that that cast shadow, there's a tiny cast shadow that you can see there, um, is just a tiny bit lighter than these. But as soon as I drop the opacity down to 85%, this is what the shadows look like. Because these ones are so much darker than this one. That at, at even 85% capacity or opacity, these ones still appear black or almost black.
Sorry about that. They're there. What's that? Yeah. Love you too. Thank you. Is it regular female Friday? I don't even know it. Uh, yeah, it has. I remember every Friday that it's happening. Yeah. For the rest of adult uh, program? For the rest of our lives, actually. So why? Because <laughs> I like the paint on Friday. Oh, you like the paint only on Friday? Only on Fridays, yeah. Other days are just... Yeah, other days are not suitable for oil painting. You have chest pieces against me or so... The next... Four paintings are going to be chess paint, chess pieces. Yeah, it's your idea, not theirs, right? Yeah, it's my idea. Good. Well, I mean, it wasn't actually my idea. I forget who recommended it. Uh, was it you, Linda? Uh, somebody yeah, in chat. Both. Somebody in chat said yeah. I should do chess pieces. I said I, was, right? I said I was struggling figuring out what I was going to do. Mm -hmm. what a... do Doesn't do what? Do your references. Uh, for the rest of block two, I have to make my own references, yes. But once I get back into block three, then I have references again that they gave me. Okay, I am going to do me. Thank you. Okie dokie. Uh, let's repaint those shadows, shall we? Now that I have to refigure out the shape, although it's not too complex, I'll just draw a line here, I guess. Put a small indent. Yeah, that works. My paint. Uh, is getting a little tacky. The warm weather is making it dry faster. So that's why it's getting tacky. Are you laughing about, are you laughing uh, at my conversation with my wife? That's pretty much how our conversations go. Our, conversa our conversations pretty much go like that. From beginning to end. All right, that, that does look better. Now I need to just soften them. Get rid of some of that paint.
Oh, was my microphone picking my wife's voice up? Yeah, she's... She's... Yeah, usually very shy, but... Every, every once in a while, she comes out of her shell a little bit more. Every, every once in a while. Alrighty, let's um let's mix up the background color. I'll take a big old chunk of this and a big old chunk of this. Yeah, that should be enough paint to to fill it all in. That should be enough. There. All mixed up. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. Now you guys can see the whole thing. Looks better. Good, good, good. Yeah, I guess I'll just use this brush. Brush number three. Now I gotta clean out three brushes. Oh, thank you, John. Yeah, I'm quite pleased with the, uh, the outcome so far. Oh, John, I think you may, you may have missed my question uh, to you earlier, or I missed your response. Um, I asked you when you were going to pick up your paintbrushes again and get back into the Evolve program to finish it off. 
uh, I think the last I remember, you only had a few, a few projects left to do, didn't you? And then were you also, were you interested in doing the, um, the next, the next series? I don't even know what they call it, but block five through seven, five through eight. I don't even know. I don't, I don't even know if there's eight blocks, if there's, if it's just five, six, seven. I uh, really have no plans of finishing. Yeah, I can I can relate to that. I can relate to that. I mean, even though I can't say that I really learned anything new, I enjoy I enjoy the the process of uh, the projects. I don't know. I think I think I would encourage you to to finish the program. I think it would give you a nice feeling of completion, which. I think is is a good a good feeling. I think the having having the excess projects even if you only have a few left or whatnot, I think having them hang over your head even if you don't really have any interest in finishing them. I don't know. Psychologically can just feel like you're forgetting something. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, when you when you look at the price, uh, Remy, when you when you look at the price, it feels it feels very very expensive um, all at once. It really does. I I completely agree with you, but um, the supplies uh, that you get for blocks one through four are about half of the price so you get you get a, a lot of really nice art uh, art supplies so if you can think about spending that much uh in a year on art supplies for oil painting that's not too bad that's not too bad starting from nothing starting from nothing it's not too bad but yeah, all at once can feel very heavy. I was kind of surprised by the price when I first uh, got approached to do the review.
Yep. One one K for the class, one K for the the materials. Not not too bad. Oh, hey there, Melanie. Better late than never. It will, be, it will be nice to start working with color in the next block because then I'll be able to talk about color theory during my live streams. Maybe give some insight on mixing. See, my, my secret to mixing colors is the fact that I spent the first 10 years, 10 or 12 years painting only using the primary colors. So learning, learning how to identify the changes and match colors using just the yellow, red, blue, white, and black, it will teach you a lot in 10 years. Oh, hey there, snakes. Yeah, tons of quizzes. Uh, no, there is no edge on the far side of the box because the front face of the box and the surface, the table surface, are the same value. So it's, it's not your small screen. Yep, still going. Welcome back. I'm almost done though. Just got to fill in the background, do this last gradient, and then, of course, untape the border. Maybe 20 more minutes. I'm just throwing paint down on the background.
Yeah, I think um, I'll probably still do paintings like this uh, with a with black and white added because I really like these these gray tones. I I really like these gray tones a lot. Uh, once I once I finish the program, I will probably actually still do paintings on this uh, uh, canvas paper because I actually don't mind working on this canvas paper for, for doing small projects like this that like these these I would call like sketchbook paintings like these are not what usually when I oil paint I spend at least two to three weeks just planning the 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 artwork I do a lot of prep work for my oil paintings weeks at a time and I also use a lot more tape maybe maybe I'll I'll show you guys how I use tape in my next painting e even though it's for evolve I might even I might do it anyway because I, I have some of my frog tape the only the only tape that I'll use in that manner is is the is the frog painters tape uh what about the shadow from the night oh mm, yeah i guess you're right then again it's on this light surface so i'm actually going to keep it because the thing is i need to have all shadows represented and I could even argue that this shadow here on this cube should be the extreme dark, but I'm not going to change it. And since the cube is white, uh, the cast shadow lightens up quite a bit. And it's noticeably, even when I'm looking at the picture correctly, um, It's it's noticeably lighter, so I'm I'm gonna just keep it that that value. It's not the most ideal, but it's about as close as I can get. I I can maybe actually add a little bit of this. Uh, um, add mixture to it. So if I come in here, I can separate it a little bit. So I can separate it like that. That looks a little bit better. That's that's all I can do though. I can't do any more than that. Uh, it's just black tea. Yeah, I just I just drink black tea. Just straight black tea. No sugar, no lemon, no nothing.
I used to drink it with a bit of sugar, and I slowly, I slowly lessened and lessened the amount of sugar. Uh, and anytime I have like an upset stomach or something, I'll just have straight black tea with no sugar. So I sort of got used to it with a lot less sugar to the point that I didn't need it anymore. Uh, it looks for you if the thin shadow line in front of the cube is blended. Uh, it's not really blended, no. I mean, it is a tiny bit, but the line is so thin that there's not really a lot of space to blend it. So I just sort of made it a line just to... Because there is a dark shadow line right underneath. Um, and yeah, it's just... It's not really worth trying to get that detailed uh, because um, I have to follow a very particular rule set in the program for these paintings. It's not that I'm choosing to do it because I want to. I'm doing it because I'm following the rules of the program. If If this was my own painting, like obviously it's my own painting. I took the reference photo. I drew it on here and I'm painting it. But if I were to do a painting like this just for myself with my own techniques, um, then I wouldn't follow. I, I would darken the, the values the way they're actually in the reference photo and not the way um, I'm required to. Yeah, yeah, um, my wife walked in. All right, uh, the admixture of that, no, I'll just use this color, I guess. I'm going to do this rather crudely. I need another paper towel. Yeah, it's not it's not perfectly straight, but I'm not going to I'm not going to fight it. It's it's not perfect, but that's fine. Get a clean paper towel. 
last tiny bit of blending, so need the cleanest brush possible. Okie dokie. That is a lot of paint. a lot of excess paint here that I got to get rid of before the blending works really well. Oh, I got paint on my hand. Too much paint. It's everywhere. It's getting on me. Yeah, you got to make some art quick. I mean, you got those portraits that you posted in Discord. You can always submit one of those. Yeah, next Friday will be the art critique. Just a reminder to everyone. I think that's good enough. I need thicker paper towels. These things are like way too thin. I'm not trying to oil paint my brand new desktop. Yeah, that's good enough. I'm satisfied with that. That's good enough. Let's do this one now.
too much paint. A little bit of a line right through here. There. Still a little bit of a line in the light section. Right through here. Just a little bit too much of a line. Blend. There, that's good. It's good enough. All right, let's just fix these edges a bit. So let's grab this color here. Fix that edge right there. And then this color is here. So we'll just fix this edge easy peasy see that helps also give the uh, cube an edge uh, what about the shadow from the night this is the shadow from the night at least that's what it looks like in the reference photo just sort of looks like a sort of a blurry night head not it's yeah it's a little it's a little weird but again i'm following the rules I also have this little part of the pond that I need to fix. There we go. Pond looks good. Everything looks good. We are done. Look at that. Let me uh, just wipe this excess paint off my brush really quick so I don't get it on anything. Let me take a swig of tea. Tasty tea that in there all right let me zoom out just a tad there now you guys can see the edges all right it's time it is time for everyone's favorite part the untaping here we go brace yourselves One piece down. All right. Two pieces down. Ah, uh, thank you, Victor. Uh, it's very much like the monthly mastery rules, actually, Linda. Yes, the next block of paintings adds color. Sorry, I needed to move the painting so I could peel so I could get the corner of this. I'll put it back. There we go. All right.
Yeah, I actually, Linda, I modeled the monthly mastery projects after this program because I thought that it was really a useful way of uh, looking at objects and values within a constraint. So I gave you guys the rule set and then I give you a new picture each month. However, we're progressing quite a bit faster. Uh, we have more values to work with and um, you can use whatever medium you want. That and I, I will be adding texture uh, soon. Okie dokie, there it is, the final painting. It looks a little bit better at an angle, so let me just tilt this. There you go. So now you can see it at an angle. Here you get all the shine from the light, and there's a lot of light shining. But here at an angle, you can see it much more clearly. Maybe a, a little patchy uh, in some spots, but... No big deal. I'm satisfied with it. I, I think it looks good. Um, I was trying to rush through there at the end, but I think I think I streamed long enough. I think four hours is a is a good number to stop on. So I'm gonna need to stop streaming now and enjoy my weekend. I might go to the I might go to the gym by myself here in like the next twenty minutes. Um but anyways, you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Have a lovely weekend. I will be back on Monday for the for a new pastel project. Wait a minute. I need a pastel project. <laughs> Actually, no, I remember what I'm going to do. Never mind. Um, anyways, you guys have a fantastic weekend, and I will see you on Monday. Take care. Peace.